Hello and welcome to this video. This is Chris from Packet Pioneer and today I'm going to talk to you about how to capture an intermittent problem with Wireshark. Now for this video we're going to already assume that we've found a good place in the path of packets to collect the traffic, so maybe on a span port or on a tap, a server side, client side, somewhere in the middle where we can actually capture the event. But one of the big problems that we have nowadays is since so many problems are intermittent, meaning we don't know exactly when they're going to happen. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Uh, let's talk about how we can actually capture that with Wireshark. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Wireshark. And this is just the an introductory uh, page here where we can set some things before we actually begin capturing. Now one thing we could do was is put Wireshark on that connection and start a capture. Just let it roll and let it go. And that can lead to a really, really large trace file. In fact, sometimes I have people say that they have this huge trace file and they had to just let it play for hours and hours and hours and hours in order to capture the event. But rather than do that, I want to show you how we can set a ring buffer so we can capture the same amount of traffic but have Wireshark break it up into smaller, more digestible trace files. Okay, so usually from here we come in and we just go up to our little blue fin and that will start our capture. But instead of doing that, we're going to come over here to our capture options. Let's go ahead and bring up this dialog. Now from here we can see the interfaces on this system that are available to capture traffic on. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the interface that I want to use for this capture. And the next thing I'm going to do is select the output option. Now this is the location within Wireshark where we can tell it where we want to store the data to. Now for me, I'm going to come over here to Browse, and I have in my root a folder called Traces. From there, I'm just going to say slow app, and go ahead and add .pcap. That's going to be the file name that I save, or the, the name that is added to all the files that I save in this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and say Save. Now after this, I can see the file path and also the name that will be added. Now the output format that I want to use, I'll go ahead and leave it at pcapng versus pcap. Uh, I'll go ahead and talk about the differences between those two in another video. But then I'm going to come down here, create a new file automatically after either a certain amount of bytes or a certain amount of seconds. So in this case, what I typically advise my customers to do is I'll have them select here and go anywhere between 250 and 500 megabytes. That's about what I like to uh, capture when it comes to a longer term capture event. So here, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave this at kilobytes, but usually I would come out down here to megabytes. That's about as big of a trace file as I want to work with, typically with Wireshark. Uh, with some of the other things, um, we can, with some of the other analyzers, we can open up larger trace files and, uh, and, and condense the data, get statistics out of it. But just for working with Wireshark, typically that's about as big as I want to go. Now I could just come down here and say start, and what the analyzer will do is it'll start capturing, it'll fill a 500 kilobyte file, save it, then start the next one. Save it, start the next one. And that'll continue until I stop it. Or I can come down here to a ring buffer. This is another option that we might want to use. What that will do is it will only save a specified number of files in that directory that I named up here, and then after that it will come around and overwrite the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and say 10 files. Now this is a, a very small amount of data that we're going to capture here just to demonstrate this. But you could give this any number you want depending on how much hard drive space you want to save up and also how much time you want to capture. If you're in a really high throughput environment, then you might fill these files a little faster. So you might need to save more of them in order to catch the event that you're trying to go after. Okay, so I'm just going to say ring buffer 10 files and let's go ahead and start capturing. Now I'm going to bring up my folder, my traces folder, and right away you can see when the first one was started. Here are this slow app, file number one. Here's the year, the month, the date, and the minute that this was captured. And as soon as this fills up, you'll see another one appear. Now just to generate some more traffic, I'm just going to come down here to my browser. Uh, let's go out to NFL.com. Let's see what's going on with the draft. Let's generate some traffic. All right, come back into Wireshark. And we're capturing. In fact, we're rolling our buffer. Let's go back into our 
folder. So here we can see, now we can see our ring buffer in play. We can see first in, first out. We can see there's a lot of data coming in because that's a big website. But I'm only saving 10 captures. Each of them are just over uh, 500 kilobytes in size. Now here, this will go until I come and I stop it. Now for my purposes, that only got me a few seconds worth of time. But if I increase that number from kilobytes to megabytes, that would allow me to capture quite a bit of time depending on the amount of traffic that's on the wire. So once we have our capture rolling, then we can wait for the event to occur. Someone says, hey, it occurred at uh, 4.30 in the afternoon. That's where we could come and find, using the time and date stamps, exactly which folder or, or which file contains the packets when the event happened. And it's also nice to have these because you can see what happened just before the event and what happened after the event. So I hope this is helpful for you when you're trying to capture those really difficult to grab intermittent application problems that only seem to happen when you're not watching. All right, we'll see you on another video. Thanks.